Hello everyone and welcome to the Festus Challenge week number 9. We are in the Silver Playoffs. Should be quite an exciting set of matches going on today. Of course, I am Imagine and with me today, filling in for Sir Morty, is uh, Shinkerex. Shink, how's it going, man? Doing really good, Imagine. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for uh, filling on in for Morty, who uh, I hope he's alright. Probably just had something come up. But, uh, you know, the show must go on, and thus we have somebody to actually fill in this this time instead of uh, last time when I sat here doing this all by myself. Yeah, I'm glad to help out. Anytime. Excellent, excellent. All right, guys. So as you see on the uh, little graphic here, we've got uh, a full day of matches here for you. We've got two sides of the Silver League playoff brackets. Now, uh, the way that the playoffs here works, for those of you who might not know, uh, whoever, uh, uh, two teams will come out of the silver bracket and, uh, they will go on to, uh, move on into the gold playoffs, which has already four teams in it. I believe those teams are Glowwater Thralls, Riders, uh, Merry Men, and, um, Holy Roman Army. Uh, they have been seeded into the gold playoffs for being uh, first and second in their respective divisions. And in here... Uh, we've got the rest of the teams, and they're going to be duking it out in all best of ones, uh, trying to move on forth. So it's uh, it's really a matter of win or you go home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm curious to imagine, what, uh, which match is, is your match that you're most interested in today? Uh, well, we have a lot of interesting setups for matches, even uh, moving on forward. Um, you know, I think Cake versus BFS will be a very interesting match just to see how BFS manages to do. You know, they, they struggled a, a lot at the start of the year, uh, but uh, as it, or my year, I, I say in quotations, of course, <laughs> um, uh, they sort of they struggled at the start of the FS's challenge, but in the last few weeks, they've done fairly well. They picked up a couple of wins, they picked up a tie, and so they actually haven't lost in about a month. Um, now, Cake started out their year doing very well, but stumbled a little bit near the end. So can, you know, the Black Fight Squadron continue their momentum forward? Can Cake uh, take back the, the you know, their, their kind of dominance that they showed at the start of the year? That, that should be a very good, um, very good matchup to begin with. And then, of course, uh, we'll see what develops as it goes on. Um, now... Uh, we are doing here on this stream the bottom side of the bracket, so that will be games B, E, F, H, and uh, even though uh, two teams will make it out, uh, we're still going to have a Silver League Finals. Um, whoever wins that will have a, uh, a prize, some sort of prize given out to them. I'm not quite sure where it is, so uh, we will have a playoff finals, uh, even though both of, those teams, both of those teams will in fact move on afterwards. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to be quite interested to see those finals, too. Uh, a lot of good players, a lot of good teams in uh, in this Silver Playoff, so I'm going to be uh, definitely watching to see who we come up against uh, in the in the gold uh, playoffs here, being the Merry Men. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're all watching. Um, it's yeah, it's, out. it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this all develops. And, uh, you know... Through the regular season, really, what you wanted to avoid is getting into the into the silver playoffs. Um, it's it's because because of the fact that it's a one and done situation, and you know it's anything can happen in a best of one, really. Mm -hmm. So even if you did better than you know the team that you're going to be playing against, that doesn't mean that you have any sort of real advantage. You know, you you still have to win, and so. Uh, being seeded into the silver playoffs, this is just a ridiculously hard set of games to go through, even if you're not playing in the first match. For sure, for sure. It uh, looks like our teams are slowly trickling in. We're waiting for crew for uh, the Aries, but um, pretty soon we're going to get started, I bet. Yep. Uh, so our, our first matchup is between Sacrilege and the Art of Warfare. Uh, now, Art of Warfare, they definitely struggled through the regular season. Um, they did not have a very good showing. But they're also one of the more uh, newer teams. The Art of Warfare themselves have been around for a very long time. I think they're like a multiple game clan as well. So, uh, you know, it's not just uh, Guns of Vickers that they play. Uh, but uh, they had, they, it was, they've been fairly new to the Guns of Vickers uh, competitive scene at least. Um, and so they, they definitely struggled mightily. Uh, they did not come out with any wins, uh, but who knows what they can pull off here. Of course, on the other, high, on the other side, 
ah, on the other side, not the other hide, uh, we've got uh, we've got Sacrilege, who also definitely had their struggles through the, the regular season, and I think they were one of the more surprising teams to have that happen to. Right, right. Um, now, obviously, uh, the previous uh, previous week they did have some unfortunate um, disconnect issues uh, happen to them. Um, and uh, while it is unfortunate, I, I do expect them to fully uh, bring their A game here today. Um, uh, take no prisoners. I mean, do everything that they possibly can do. And I expect Taw to uh, Taw to do what they do. Um, uh, while they, yeah, they haven't won anything. They're definitely they're definitely competitors. They um, they can make your life miserable if you give them a chance. Yeah, I know the Merriman have uh, scrimmed themselves, uh, scrimmed them several times. And look, I've got to give it to Taut. Even with the struggles that they've had, and it's very easy to just go, ah, oh, screw this, I'm done, I'm out, I don't want to play this, we're just losing all the time. But they've they've come out, come out through every week, they've been here, they've been competing, and, uh, you know, it's it's this kind of seasoning that you need if you're going to do well in, mm-hmm. a, in a competitive uh, match. You, you need to get that... Uh, that adrenaline under you, at least, if nothing else. Now, our first match here is going to be on Parent and Rumble. Um, and so this is one of those maps definitely that anything can really happen on. Um, you know, there, there's some longer technical map, more technical maps such as Dunes or Fjords. But Parent and Rumble, really anything can happen on this, on this, um, on this level. Absolutely. We've seen it before. I mean, uh, it, I mean if we're going to continue talking about the previous week... Uh, there was a team uh, team that was, what, 5-0? I cannot remember that team for the life of me now. Had it in my head. Um, I mean, it was a just nonstop crazy action. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be intense. It's going to be quick. Uh, we're going to see who comes out top, though. Um, looking at looking at the ship uh, ship loadouts right now, I'm, I'm quite curious. But, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got a Goldfish Pyra and Double Pyra. So, a lot of Pyramidians, and it's actually kind of interesting because uh, we've had that go back and forth a lot um, this season where, you know, people start out using a lot of Pyras and then kind of moved away from using Pyras, but it looks like we're mm-hmm. kind of back to uh, using those Pyras now. Yeah, I think I think what they're thinking, what the teams are thinking, is that they don't want a chance, uh, since this is a best of one, um, they want to go with something that's, uh, that's a little bit more... Uh, I don't want to say easier to use, but a little bit more familiar to them, um, I guess is the word that I want. Um, uh, you did see a lot of experimentation out there. There was a lot of goldfishes, uh, a lot of mobulas. Um, and we saw some squids near the end. I think uh, I think Cake at the at the last match used the squid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we've, we've definitely been seeing a little bit of a variation, but uh, a lot of times you just want to use what is, as you said, most familiar, especially in a setting like this. You don't want to risk... Uh, you know, trying to trying to pull that build out of your your behind and uh, and you know die. <laughs> Absolutely. It looks like we're getting in into the game now. Um, it's going to take me a bit of time to load in, but uh, as soon as we get in, we'll go over th- over the loadouts because that's going to take it's going to be real fast before we get into those action. Yep, and uh, definitely having a little hiccup there loading. Okay, there we go. So of course we are once again on Parent Rumble. This is one of my personal favorite maps. Uh, I love the, if nothing else, the aesthetic look of this map. But it can be such a difficult, uh, difficult match to, or map to, uh, you know, ride around in. It's got a lot of debris to run into. But let's get a quick loadout of ships here on the Art of Warfare side on the tentacle. Captained by I am active. We've got a Watcha up front with a Banshee on the side and a, a flamethrower on the other side. And on the Grabthar's hammer, we've got. Uh, Quayon, Quayons, uh, piloting uh, a Metamidian. It's got Gatling and Mortar up front and a Flamethrower flare gun on the side. Are you in yet, Shink? I am not, unfortunately. Still loading. All right, no problem. Let's get a quick look at here at the Sacrilege ships. We've got the Kamikaze Punk. It's got Gatling, Mortar up front and Flamethrower flare gun on the side as well. That is Tropo's ship and on... The Ares, captained by Cassus Krios. We've also got a Mini Minion with that Gatling Mortar up front, Flamethrower Flare Gun on the side. So three of these ships are exactly alike. Yeah. Um, they definitely they want those um, those Flare Guns for these Cloud Cover, because you can you can get lost lost in this map. Um, it is very, very cloudy, very, uh, very easy to actually 
um, see teams fly over and under each other, um, and you kind of just like, no, just look down. Um, yeah, very much so. A lot. So the flares are gonna uh, are gonna probably play a factor into here. Um, I'm curious to see who. Uh, the... We've also got the Graptor's hammer and the Kamikaze yep. Punk almost colliding here, and uh, this is <laughs> no none of these guys saw each other, so the Kamikaze Punk just goes right by him. Ares and Graptor's hammer now uh, getting those Gatlings down on each other. That full Watcher Barrage goes and hits absolutely nothing, and you cannot have that happen when you're That's... using a Watcher. You cannot afford having an entire clip go by, and Graptor's hammer just gets absolutely annihilated by the Ares. Yeah, now you're going to start to see uh, Sacular start to focus in on the tentacle because, uh, I mean, now it's just a, a tentacle needs to get out, get out now. Yeah, they, um, they do get a nice watch barrage off there on the Kamikaze Punk knocking out all the guns. Uh, and they, they get a nice amount of uh, fire onto the Ares as well. But Ares is going to continue on flying behind him. Graptor's Hammer, however, is respawning right over here. So unless the Ares can make something happen right now, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble here soon. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, another watch, fight, uh, watch a shot that barely missed um, uh, most of its shots, but the, the Gravathar's hammer is coming in. Shots are firing, mortar is going off. And is it gonna are they going to be able to finish him off? Just not oh, quite so. Oh my goodness. Oh my, a couple of those ended up missing right at the end. And now uh, Kamikaze Punk is going to come in. Gravathar's hammer does take out the Ares, but the Kamikaze Punk is going to take down the hammer once more. And... And that is a two to one lead here for uh, Sacrilege. Very quick set of uh, fights. And now, go and the Tentacle make something happen. Yes, they do get all of the guns on that ship knocked out. And uh, Tentacle needs to continue disabling uh, this Kamikaze Punk. Otherwise, they're going to have a very hard time of getting anything done here. Kamikaze Punk following up with a little bit of ramps here and there. Already taken down. The armor can continue on bumping the Tentacle. But they are at the edge of the map, so they are getting pushed back by the winds here. Now this is this is something that you, you do see goldfish pilots do a lot. They they have a whole stripping uh oh oh hold on Gravathar's hammer is coming in mortar shots are raining in. Yeah um, the, this may be the end for Kamikaze Punk. Kamikaze Punk taking a bounce down and Gravathar's hammer uh taking advantage of uh, getting behind this and taking advantage of the uh Sacrilege team being in red spawn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we've we've you know we've seen that happen time and time again. Where you're, if you're fighting any other team spawn, uh, you can get a fight turned on you real quick like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, now it looks like uh, Sacrilege does have a little tiny bit of uh, uh, whole advantage here, whole uh, whole health advantage. Uh, the tentacle did take at least some damage, but that's not going to be. Yeah, I mean it's very minuscule. Uh, although, although I will say that I have seen way too many ships live with that much health. <laughs> very true, very true. Uh, um, so who knows? It can, it can make the difference. <laughs> yes, it can. Yes, it can. Now, um, here we're seeing a, little bit of, a bit of maneuvering here. Kamikaze Punk is moving on, but... Oh, Ares... wait, hold on. Graptor's Hammer has actually got himself stuck against the building here. Uh, I think they're being pushed back by the wind, and... It, okay, they finally get on out of there. Finally, ooh. That can get very hairy. If you're there for a long time and you start losing your armor, uh, you, you might just end up giving a free kill. And, I mean, now the problem with the, the Order of Warfare is they're way split up. They're on, like, opposite ends of the map currently. Yeah, see, I, I do agree with that. However, the Ares is trailing behind Kamikaze Punk. I don't know. Uh, both these teams seem to be having issues with movement, um, staying together. Yeah, no. I think that's what's hurting them. Uh, hopefully the tentacle can get back to Grafthar's hammer, which yeah. he seems to be. Well, it looks like Grafthar's hammer... Actually, the tentacle is just sitting completely still currently. Hmm. Is, is moving just a little bit back towards the Grafthar's hammer. Grafthar's hammer is actually turned like way around. Yeah, this doesn't look pretty. Yeah, I, they're, they're trying to get around that building once again and just not managing to do so. And the real problem is that the comic has a punk and the areas are now actually coming up from behind him. And if they can find the Grafthar's hammer trying to move around this building like that, uh, that's just going to be the you know really the end of it now the tentacle is turned the right way here they should maybe be able to spot all this they these two teams should be here in drums battle by now and here we go we got some spots going on tentacle you gotta start 
doing something and Same no watch of shots coming out at all and now Ares is gonna follow up against the tentacle armor down bump going on it blows off all those gun arcs uh, but that is gonna give the tentacle enough time to at least get their armor back up but now these two ships are just getting bunched up here and the Ares and Kamikaze Punk are going to town uh, they're just feasting on how this positioning of Ta ended up here and taking these two ships out with an incredible amount of speed Absolutely, yeah. That was that was very impressive. That's what happens when uh, when they team they team up together. Um, that's something that we do notice. Uh, quite uh, useful queer sack uh, when they do get group up and they do start focusing. Um, they're they're a force to reckon with. Yep. So that was. Uh, and I I was very surprised to not see any watcher fire go off on the comic because they punk there. Uh, you know, even if you're not getting anything uh, knocked out, you at least want to. <laughs> put the fear of the Huacha in them and, and no shots came and then a little bit of bump turning the tentacle sideways and that's really all all the Sacklish team wanted absolutely yeah. I'm really curious why that watch barrage didn't go off uh, maybe the gunner was preoccupied with engines or something I don't know not too sure I mean they definitely had their chance to to fire it off I, I do think that their arc was down a bit low Mm -hmm. So maybe they were trying to see it because you know if you're looking at the at the pyramidian from the bottom and you're not sure you can hit the guns, then you might want to hold your shot. But at that point, I, I think they almost just had to go for it. And now Kamikaze Punk is coming up. They have found the Grand Thoris Hammer. They only need one more kill. That armor is getting stripped so quickly. That ram is actually going to miss completely. Tentacle trying to make something happen against the Ares. A lot of that watch and misses. Now Grabthor's Hammer does get taken down here by the Ares in the end. So even though that ram did not work out for Sacrilege, all they needed is one more kill. The Ares was not a or the uh, Tentacle was not able to disable the Ares. And that will move Sacrilege on to our second match. Uh, they will go on to face the Mad Hatters in uh, the match that will come a little bit later today. So congratulations to Sacrilege for pulling on through here and uh well we would like to very much of course thank ta for participating all season long and uh they definitely had a little bit of a little bit of a chance in this match uh they mm -hmm. had a they had a good engagement there but we're just not quite able to pull it out in the end yeah i think the buildings really uh probably the buildings in the map edge probably did them in um i do think uh, i do agree with you ta is uh, great sportsman um, they definitely stuck it through it uh, through the entire season, and, and my kudos to them. Uh, I'm I'm sorry they couldn't win a, a single match. Um, uh, I was I was rooting for them, but um, but yeah, it happens. Uh, there has to be a loser, and um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Tall is out of the silver playoffs um, now. Um, good luck to you guys in the next competitive event. Yep, we definitely hope to see them back. All right, guys, we're going to go just do a quick little break here, uh, like a minute or so. Don't go anywhere. We're getting into our next lobby. Uh, so we will be back in just a moment, guys. Don't go anywhere.